Hanukkah and welcome to the Borough Park JCC's live Hanukkah party honoring Holocaust survivors. Let us come in to the Borough Park JCC to join this live special event. This live Hanukkah celebration is brought to all of you by Heritage Levavot and Chaim Salman Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. And I would like to especially thank them for partnering with us on such a special celebration honoring Holocaust survivors here at the Borough Park Jewish Community Council. And here we are in the offices of the Borough Park Jewish Community Council. As we are getting ready to go into the live Hanukkah party, Oh, really? Hey, what are you doing? Liar, here? I'm here, liar. You're waiting for one of our services? I'm waiting for one thing. I need to find out. I'm going to perform here and tell everyone about how amazing BPJCC is, but I don't know much about it. Could you help me? Absolutely. So as we walk into these offices, here is the place where people in this community will need help come here each and every anything, day. Anything like food stamps, Medicaid, anything? If you need help with service, social services, you come here. If you need help finding a job, we help people find, place people in jobs. We guide people in the types of jobs they need. Meet one of our experts, people who are senior citizens. They turn 65. They don't really know the services that are out there, the programs that are out there. Come into the Bar Park JC. Meet one of our specialists. I'm a senior citizen. Senior? I'm a senior, okay. Holocaust survivors, we have a program to help them. People need help with immigration. Come in here, meet our experts, and we will help people free and confidential. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. But can I ask you, like, who is sponsoring this event? Well, the event, the Hanukkah Live Celebration, is being is done in partnership with Chaim Salomon right. and Heritage Levavot. And we are about to begin this wonderful, exciting Hanukkah celebration. That is so exciting. And you know there is a big show coming up here. We're going to have here interviews of Holocaust survivors. And we're also going to have Rabbi Waiwai. We're going to have Pompadisa and, you know... All kinds of stuff, helping for all types of... You know what ADHD stands for, right? Attention Deficit... Hey, donuts! <laughs> so we're going to have donuts, we're going to have... Yingelich Boys Choir. Yingelich Boys Choir. You know everything. A live Hanukkah skit. A Hanukkah skit. Full of comedy, full of laughter. And yes. of course, the great Yoeli Lebowitz. That's right! I'm excited! And I'm sure you're excited too. Because today we're celebrating life. We're celebrating light we're celebrating miracles and we are in the midst of a miraculous times now because with all these hardships there are people who care people standing here 24 hours seven days a week ready to help all of our seniors and juniors all types of ages helping them with whatever they need whatever they could welcome everyone to the bp jcc hanukkah celebration this celebration is actually happening every year for the Holocaust survivor live with bringing down music and food and a great party. This year, we got an upgrade. You can stay at home, watch it from the comfort of your own home. And it's not only limited to Holocaust survivors, any survivors. Any person who wants to watch this, please, you're welcome. You can click and forward it to other friends and be part of this big celebration. This is the final Hanukkah celebration in Golos, hopefully. And next year we're going to go to Yerushalayim, live, where everyone can be in person. But t today we're having music, laughter, and inspiration. We are here and I'm speaking to you. I can't see you, but you could see me. It's a Roya Vaina phenomenon. <laughs> we can't explain it differently. And what, what can I say? It's Gamzum Latoiva, you know? It's through vision that we can see each other, and that's a blessing that we could see each other and we don't have to be locked out visually as well. So, that's it. I hope you're having a good time. And I hope you're gonna enjoy this beautiful Festivus show. We're gonna have speakers speaking about inspirational stuff, but even without speeches and without any uh, interviews, just the fact that we're sitting here amongst people who are helping others. And we're sitting with people who are always caring about other people. That's already a beautiful celebration. And in Hanukkah, when it's all about Nisim, but more than that, the Ner Hanukkah, there's a beautiful explanation about the Ner Hanukkah, how this evolved, beginning after the Mabu. 
when there was darkness in the world and Noach comes out and he is sending out a bird, the bird comes back with an olive branch in his mouth. He takes the olives, the olives and he makes oil out of it. He puts it away in small little kegs. These kegs he never uses only once when his son Shem becomes, becomes Koyan. He anoints him and then puts away the kegs and tells Shem, keep that very careful. That oil is needed in later generations. They didn't know who, what, when, where. But Shem kept it and then he gave it to his uncle Avram. And Avram gave it to Yitzchak. And Yitzchak wanted to give it to Esau because he loves Esau. But Yaakov is the one that is going to be the father of Bnei Yisrael. They don't know yet that Yaakov is Yisrael. But there's a fight going on between Yaakov and Esau about the Bechoira. Yaakov wins the Bechoira, buys it from Esau, and at the same time wins also the kegs of oil. We know in this parasha last week about the fight going on by the river between the Sarashal Esau. Give me the Pachim Ketanam, give me the Pachim Ketanam. These Pachim Ketanam are little small kegs of oil. Yaakov gets it, Yaakov uses it for his children, and this goes on till the Beis HaMikdash. In the Beis HaMikdash, they are sitting there, all the oils are corrupt and disastrous, there's no pure oil anymore. Until one coin says, do you remember there is one keg of oil, that old ancient keg of oil, that Pach Shemen, could we use that? And they said, ah, it's not going to work. That's only a little keg of oil, it's only going to be enough for one day. And they said, it doesn't matter. Today is for today. Let's light and shine into the world some light today. So they did it. They lit the menorah. And instead of burning one day, it burned eight days. But it never stopped burning. It's still shining today. And that's why when we see, uh, when you see an older fellow who s survived the Holocaust, you should know that's another Nair Hanukkah that went down thousands of years that is shining light into our darkness. And this light, all these lights together, will shine and make a big torch that will bring us to the light of Yerushalayim, to Eir Shal Mashiach. So, that was enough for the Torahs today. We gotta understand that Hanukkah and Purim are very similar, especially nowadays. Both of them we say, Al Hanesim, right? Al Apirkan. Both of them, we wear masks, right? I don't know the Shem Sashara, you can only see, you can't touch, no talking. You know? I've, I've been doing mitzvah dance for 20 years, and only lately I've gotten requests from even non Jews. Can I, how can I get the gartel? I said, why do you need the gartel? COVID, you know, we don't want to dance with the. So people are getting, sh you know, it's unbelievable how these things are picking up. Going and making mitzvah tans. This is crazy. And I'm the batachim. Hey. So if you know someone who wants to, you know, I have a gartel to sell you. Okay. So today we're going to have uh, some uh, very beautiful, um, interesting action happening in the show. And I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank Fidelis Care for the outpouring support throughout the year, especially now for Hanukkah. And thanking all the sponsors that are in charge and involved all year long, helping other people. The show today is also sponsored by Pharmerica. Pharmerica, the number one pharmaceutical company that you want to know about their name, Pharmerica, P H A R. America. Thank you. We also want to thank our sponsor, Began. Wherever you go, in every kosher grocery store, or everywhere else, you go around and you see Began, da -da 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 -da. Began, always fresh, always amazing quality, good food. Check them out. And now, get ready, we're going in to the studio with Pampadisa and the rest of the gang. They're waiting for me, they're so excited. I'll show you, come with me, come with me. Come, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll show you. I'll show you. Ouch, I'll show you, I'll show you. Ow, stop it, let me in here. Now, Lekuvat Hanukkah, Lekuvat is beautiful Yom Tov of lights of Nisim. We will hear about the Nisim from the world famous Pompadisa! <laughs> Yalla, 
Pidi da da lai, da da da, ya ba 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 me. Bau Hashem, Baru Hashem, di da da lai, da 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 da. Bau Hashem, Baru Hashem, di da 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 lai. Thank you so much for the amazing Pompadisa. And now, Pompadisa and myself, we have a history. We've been singing together for a long time, especially with another rabbi who is flickering lights in the darkness. In the entire world, we know now the name Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. Today, we have the privilege of watching and listening Rabbi Y.Y. shine light once again in these difficult times. Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson. I am so privileged to have been invited by the Borough Park JCC to address you, my dearest brothers and sisters, the heroes of the Jewish community. You are the timeless heroes of the Jewish people. You survivors give us resilience and inspiration. You teach us everything, or almost everything, we have to know about life and not only about surviving, but about thriving, about cultivating hope in the most difficult and challenging of times. I still recall right after the corona pandemic, they interviewed Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau, former chief rabbi of Israel, Buchenwald survivor, and he turned to all of his colleagues, he said, to my colleagues, She'eris to survivors of the Holocaust, we are quarantined in our home, we can't be at our homes, a seder for Pesach, we can't be with our families, the Eneklach, the grandchildren. It's so difficult, but Rabbi Lau say, said, remember, fellows, we have been through much worse times. We have been through the worst of the worst, and we came out, not unscathed, but we came out triumphant, resilient. We rebuilt our country, Eretz Yisrael, we rebuilt our faith, our communities, our Torah institutions, our yeshivas, our shuls, our social institutions. We rebuilt our families. He said, don't worry, Hevra. Don't worry, Hevra. This too, this too will, this too will pass. So I am really honored to be here with you. And I really want to express a special gratitude to Rabbi Avi Greenstein for all of his incredible work in the Borough Park JCC who invited me here today to be able to address you. I want to also thank Chaim Solomon Nursing Home for sponsoring this special event. 
And I know that BPJCC is such an incredible and amazing organization. I want to thank all of its staff, its dedicated staff who day in and day out really take care of our brothers and sisters and are there for them and all their needs. And of course, the dedicated CEO, my dear friend, Rabbi Avi. And thank you to BPJCC for all of the services for the Jewish community in Borough Park and especially for the Holocaust survivors. I don't want to take up all my time thanking people, but it really means so much to me. And thank you for making it happen. Thank you, Chaim Solomon Nursing Home dedicating itself for the seniors in such a compassionate way and sponsoring this virtual event. Hope during these trying times. Friends, you know what brings me inspiration today? You know what gives me hope? Take a look at this authentic photo. You see? A Hanukkah menorah burning. Behind it is draped a Nazi flag with a swastika. Who would take such a picture? Why is there a swastika behind the menorah? Let me tell you the story. This picture was taken in a city named Kiel, Kiel, Germany. The rabbi of Kiel was a Jew by the name of Rabbi Akiva Baruch Posner. It was the eighth night of Hanukkah, 1932, December. The eighth night of Hanukkah was Friday evening. Of course, Friday evening we can't light candles after Shabbat. So, Rabbi Posner, Rabbi Akiva Baruch Posner, the rabbi of Kiel, rushed to light Hanukkah candles so that afterwards his wife can light Shabbos candles and welcome the last night of Hanukkah and kill Germany. He puts the menorah by his window. But in the backdrop, you see the headquarters of the Gestapo with the Nazi flag and the swastika. His wife, Rebetzin Rachel Posner, sees this image and it's surreal. She can't believe it. I mean, here is a menorah burning. And right behind it is the venomous swastika of the Nazi party. She decides she has to immortalize the moment, moments before Shabbos. And she goes and she fetches her camera and she takes this photograph. She writes something on the other side of the picture. In German. Hanukkah 1932. And this is what she writes in translation. Death to Judah, so the flag says. Judah will live forever, so the lights answer. Death to Judah, so the flag says. Yudev et Lebenaf Abik. So the light answers. This is a very short time before the elections that will bring Adolf Hitler to power. January 30th, 1933, Adolf Hitler, Yemach Shemai, is elected as Chancellor of Germany. Rabbi Dr. Akiva Baruch Posner, his wife Rachel, and their children listen to the pleas of their community to get out of Germany as fast as possible. And indeed, a year later, they left Germany en route to what was then called Palestine, Eretz Yisrael, the Holy Land. In fact, they and the majority of the Kiel community were saved from the Holocaust. Years and years pass. And just last year, Hanukkah, I get an email from a grandson, a 
of Rachel Posner and her husband, Rabbi Akiva Posner. This menorah was donated to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. But once a year, the Posner family takes the menorah from Yad Vashem, Hanukkah, living in Haifa. They light the same menorah every year at the windowsill, showing their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren the photo of that same menorah in Kill, Germany, being lit in 1932 with the swastika in the background. Last year I get a call before Hanukkah from my friend, Rabbi Yehuda Tachtel, one of the prominent spiritual leaders of Berlin, the Chabad ambassador to Berlin, who's built an empire of Jewish institutions in Berlin. And he told me that he recently met the president of Germany, Frank Steinmeier. And the president offered to put up a menorah on behalf of the German government at the Brandenburg Gate. And he asked Rabbi Teichtel if he could have the honor to come and light the menorah the first night of Hanukkah. It's only one problem when we light the menorah, we make the blessings. It's usually done by a Jew. So without skipping a hard beat, Rabbi Teichtel said, Mr. President, I have a special honor for you. You won't light the first candle, you will light the shamash that lights all the candles. And then you'll give me the shamash and I'll light the first candle. And so, the first night of Hanukkah, cherry picker lifted up Rabbi Yehuda Tachtel and the president of Germany at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, where he lit the shamash, and the rabbi lit the menorah. And when I saw the videos of that event, of the president of Germany lighting a huge menorah at the Brandenburg Gate, with the Hasidic rabbi standing near him at the cherry picker. And I looked at the picture of Yehuda Marzenbach, the grandson of Rabbi Posner and Rebetzin Posner, lighting their menorah in Haifa. I had a flashback of seeing a picture of that note that she wrote in 1932. Judah dies, thus says the flag. Yudev et leben af ebik. Judah will live forever, thus say the Hanukkah lights. And I ask you the question, who was right? The swastika or Rachel Posner's little inscription on the back of her humble photograph? What do we need more than this episode? to capture the miracle of our time and of our generation. Despite such difficult circumstances, despite savage suffering, despite the darkness that befell our people and the world just two mortgages ago, despite 70 years of suffering in Stalinist Russia, and the decade of suffering of the Jews in Eastern Europe under the Hitler's regime, despite all the challenges from within and without, despite Israel being surrounded like a sheep surrounded by 70 wolves, the flame of Judaism and the Jewish people came so close to being extinguished. And yet the miracle happened, Shechiyonu v'kimonu v'giyonu l'zmanazah, the flame of hope and faith and resilience and Yiddishkeit and Jewish pride and dignity, not only has not been extinguished, but it continues to burn and brighten up so many lives. It was just a few years ago on Hanukkah, in the shul, you know, in Bell Harbor in Florida. I have a cousin there, he runs the shul, Rabbi Shalom Lipsker. Wonderful and talented rabbi, first cousin of my mother. And he put up a nice menorah in front of the shul of Bell Harbor. And they kindled the menorah and the community came out. And they were singing, But there was a certain, I don't know, feeling of melancholy because the light of the menorah was eclipsed by the beautiful lights all over the place 
of the American holiday at the end of December and the beginning of January, New Year's. The lights were all over the place. The streets, and the malls, and the highways, and the pond and the ocean, the bay and the ocean was lit up with such brightness and such exquisite, brilliant designs. And you know, the flame, <laughs> the simple flame of the menorah was not very conspicuous. And everybody saw it. It was, a, it was like the Jewish flame was drowned out. It was nullified. It was completely assimilated, lost, forfeited. And the intense, beautiful, dazzling lights of the December 25th holiday that night in Bell Harbor in Florida. And Rabbi Lipsker got up and he gave a speech and he said, you know, I know that this light seems so small and inadequate relative to all the other brilliant and dazzling bright lights. But just realize that this light represents Jewish eternity, Jewish resilience. It's the light of the Beis Amikdash, of the menorah, that cannot get extinguished. It's been kindled for thousands of years until this very day. But as passionate and as charismatic as he is and was at that night, it wasn't very persuasive in light, pun intended, of all of the lights in the environment. And then something happened. There was a blackout. And all the electricity... And Bell Harbor went out. It was pure darkness. There was one light left. It was the flame of the menorah that was now burning so bright. It was like a moment of unique divine providence. And one of the people there changed his life. He started to embrace Jewish observance and he said, at that moment I realized this was a special message. Sometimes it's so easy to get dazzled and to get intoxicated and to get inebriated by the powerful lights of secularism, by the promise of modernity. And there are so many blessings in modernity, but lacking our anchor in our ancient tradition and Jewish faith. We often feel we could say goodbye to the old for a much better and promising world. And we bid farewell to everything we came from. This is what this Jew said. But at that moment, I realized that all of these big and beautiful lights, they're very powerful and enthralling and intoxicating and electrifying. But life with its ups and downs will often extinguish them. And you have to be able to have that powerful flame the Neir Hashem Nishmas Adam, the flame of God, which is the human soul, Neir Mitzvah V'Torah Er, the candle of mitzvahs and the lamp, the fire, the flame of Torah and faith, and the Munah and Betochen and resilience and values and commitment, the faith of our tradition and our history and our relationship with our family and our soul and our deepest priorities and our God and our people and our homeland and our Torah. That will sustain us, it will anchor us, it will center us through the vicissitudes of life and through the various fluctuations that we have. I have to be able to be centered in a core that is indestructible, that is invincible. That's the flame of the inner spirit of the soul that never, ever dies. And it's you, it's you, it's you people. You and your parents who have been through a lot and yet pay tribute and testimony to the eternity of our hope, of our faith, of our spirit, to the power of Torah, to the power of the depth of Torah, of the soul of Torah, to invigorate the world and to continue to sustain us. I once had such a powerful experience, for me it was a powerful experience a few years ago. My family comes from Russia. My father was born in near Moscow, Mamontovka. My mother was born in Kutaisi in Georgia. My grandfather was arrested in the Stalin purges. He was tortured. He was almost executed. He was sent to Siberia. He made it out in the middle of the Second World War. 
Both of my parents were refugees. I grew up in America, but I grew up in a home that was extremely sensitive to the experiences of what the Jews went through in Russia. And I grew up with a generation that went through Hitler's Holocaust or Stalin's gulags and purges and executions. Incredible, incredible generation of people. And I am speaking, I am speaking to, to you heroes. Your parents were heroes, your grandparents were heroes, and you're heroes. You continue the story, you continue the flame, you continue the hope. And I went back to Russia, and I grew up with, with the experiences. I heard the stories of what happened there. And I went back and I met in Moscow the chief rabbi of Russia, Rabbi Beryl Lazar. And I asked him, how many Jewish day schools did you guys build in Russia since communism fell? And he told me, 104 Jewish day schools. I called up Rabbi Katlarsky from Chabad in New York, and I asked him, how many Chabad shluchim, Chabad ambassadors, are there today in the former Soviet Union? And he said, more than 400 families. And I could not believe my ears. Here you're dealing with a country where the flame of Yiddishkeit was completely extinguished for 70 years. All of Judaism had to go underground. Millions of Jews were deprived of any relationship with Yiddishkeit. And then communism fell. And today, Yiddishkeit is thriving there. More than 400 families of rabbis and rabbits of Chabad and other organizations, institutions, camps and JCCs and shuls and prates. Lag Boimer. 3,000 Jewish children marching in the streets of Moscow, screaming, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad. God is one in the country where atheism became the greatest ideal and where faith was not only persecuted, but hunted down in the most evil and harsh of ways. A man who killed close to 50 million people in the Kremlin on Hanukkah. They light this beautiful menorah and sing songs of Jewish history and Jewish faith. And I almost feel bad for Lenin and Stalin who are in the mausoleum just a few yards away. I wanted to say turning over in their grave, but they don't really have a grave. I don't really feel bad for them, but you know what I mean? With Yamalkis and Sitzis lighting the menorah, if that is not a Jewish miracle, if that is not a miracle, what is a miracle? You travel to Biribijan. Biribijan is the city where Stalin wanted to exile 3 million Jews in 1953. It's on the tip of Russia, close to China, I think 5,000 miles from Moscow. And I know there a Chabad rabbi who built a mikveh and built a kosher glat restaurant. So if you want to take your wife on a honeymoon and you want glat kosher, you can go to Biribijan. And how about my friends in Siberia? Families who are living in Siberia, the coldest region on earth, building Yiddishkeit. I have a cousin, Western Siberia, Tuman is finishing a mikveh now. Because they had to travel for hours to find a mikveh, so they're finishing a mikveh now. Rabbi Yerachmiel Garelik in Tuman, Siberia. And then go to Dubai. And look at the peace treaties of Israel with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. And now Yiddishkeit. My friend Rabbi Levi Duchman in Dubai, building Yiddishkeit, davening Shachris, min chamaidav, putting up a menorah, having classes in Chumash, in Gemara, in Alocha, in Jewish law. Friends, don't underestimate this. Nobody would have imagined this in their wildest dreams. I was not long ago in Colorado before Corona. So one of the great Rosh Hashivas, the Lithuanian Rosh Hashivas, Rabbi Kagan, tells me that in 1940, there was a Jew in New York selling old books, and he called over one of the rabbis, Rav Bloch from Tells, and he offered him an old Talmudic text, a commentary, and Rabbi Kagan in Colorado starts crying. He says, the man said, take it for a quarter. Das is the let's the ktsois. Das wird verkauft werden. Jews in Eastern Europe were slaughtered. This is the last Ktsoy Sachoshin, the last commentary on the Talmud that would be sold in America, treated well. Little did he know at that time, hundreds, thousands of thousands of sacred Jewish books would be sold in the United States of America and would be sold in Europe and in Asia and in Australia and in South Africa. And of course in Borough Park, 
in New York, in Israel, and throughout the entire world. The flame is inextinguishable. And the reason is because Jewish eternity is something that transcends the rationalities and the predictable patterns of history. If we look at the predictable patterns of history, we should have not been here today. But Moses says, you cleave on to God, you are alive forever. The prophet Malachi says, God says, I am invincible, I am immortal. You also will never perish as long as we remain connected to infinity, to eternity, to that which transcends time, matter, and space. We remain connected to the truth of reality through Torah, through mitzvahs, through faith, through unity, through love, through connection, through hope, and through our constant growth in the study of Torah and the celebration of Yiddishkeit, celebration of mitzvahs, and bequeathing it to our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. As long as we remain permeated with the power of our tradition and the power of our Torah. We are eternal. Am Yisrael Chai. Friends, there's also something else to commemorate and to say today. Shachiyano ve'kimano ve'giyano l'zman azah. For me, as a student of Jewish history, when I look at this, it's extremely moving. And that is when I look at what happened just a few days ago in Iran. I don't know the details of the story. Nobody yet knows the details of the story. But I have to be honest with you. When I watched the news and when I saw the reports about one of the greatest scientists and physicists of Iran, the architect behind the nuclear plants of Iran. The one who has been helping Iran develop nuclear energy, nuclear power, and the nuclear bomb with the one objective of annihilating Rahman al-Islam, God forbid, Israel. The Ayatollahs of Iran have promised that under their watch, Zionism, Israel, the Jewish people will be exterminated. Like the Haman of old in Persia who said, give me one day and we'll exterminate every single Jew, man, woman, and child. And this is within living memory of the Holocaust, when we're blessed to have so many survivors still with us, and they had to hear day in and day out that rhetoric of Khomeini and Rawani and Ahmadinejad, Yimachshamah talking about the imminent extermination of Israel and the 6 million Jews living in Israel. 6.6 .6 million, that's not a random number. And to be able to see how God has brought us to this time and blessed us with this gift, that Jews can be in their own homeland, in a homeland with an army, with a leadership that can stand up for the Jewish people and protect the Jewish people and can send their representative, or American representatives, I don't know exactly what happened, to uproot these arch-terrorists, whether it's Salamani, whether it's this nuclear scientist, uproot them, make the world a safer place, protect the Jewish people, protect innocent people around the world. This is something to be grateful for. It's something to say Shechiano for. It's something to be thankful for. You know, friends, last January, January 27, 2020, 46 leaders from the world came to Yad Vashem, to the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, to commemorate the 75th anniversary since the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau on January 27, 1945. 75 years later, 2020, in January, world leaders, including, including the leaders of the Allies who defeated Nazi Germany in 1945, were gathered now in the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, in the Jewish eternal homeland, our holy land, Eretz Yisrael. And who did they invite to speak as the representative of the Holocaust survivors? Rabbi Lau, Rabbi Yisrael Meir Lau, who was liberated from Buchenwald in 19. 
45 at the age of eight. Buchenwald concentration camp, one of the youngest to survive. He's now 82, many long, happy and healthy years. He lost much of his family in the Holocaust, including his father, who died in Treblinka, his mother as well, some siblings. He and his brother, Naftali, survived. He became later the chief rabbi of Israel. And he spoke to close to 50 of the most powerful women and men on our planet. Leaders, presidents, princesses, kings, prime ministers, vice presidents, politicians of all stripes and all backgrounds in so many different countries. He posed a very powerful question to them. He said, I want to ask you a question. Noah went into the ark with all types of animals. How did they all coexist in the ark for a year? How did the gazelle coexist with the lioness? How did the cheetah tolerate the antelope? How did the tiger handle the baby calf? How did they coexist? For a whole year, there was peace. We don't have a record of one beast devouring another beast. What happened? Interesting question. Bailao said, I'll tell you what happened. They all realized that there's a flood out there. There is a raging flood. And if we don't learn to coexist inside of here, we will all die a miserable death. He turned to the leaders of the free world and all parts of the world and he says, listen, there is a flood out there. If we don't learn to coexist inside our ark and our planet, we will all suffer. Little did he know a few months later, this pandemic came about and paralyzed the world. But he turned to them and he said, your signatures can change history. So I want to ask you to sign and decide for love and peace and brotherhood. They gave him a beautiful standing ovation. It was a very moving moment to see that scene. 75 years later, Chief Rabbi of Israel addressing all these world leaders in our eternal capital, Jerusalem. But I say this to all of you and all of us, namely, there are a lot of challenges out there. Inside here, we must be united. We must be the most powerful and united community as ever. We may disagree with each other, but we must never, ever alienate ourselves from each other. I can disagree with me. You, I, can, I said I can disagree with me. That's also true. As a Jew, we disagree with ourselves. We can disagree with each other, but we must always, always be here for each other. Yes, we can allow our differences to separate us, but today we must go deeper and realize that with the floods raging around and about, we must become unified, fuse together, appreciate each other, take care of each other, support each other, love each other, celebrate each other, and continue to kindle that flame of Torah, that flame of mitzvahs, that flame of emunah, that flame of faith and resilience and hope until the whole world is filled with the divine light of healing and love forever. Thank you very much. Every year at Hanukkah, I have the honor and privilege for the past couple of years to sing for a couple of hundred Holocaust survivors with the Chaim Solomon Nursing Rehab Company over there. And it's amazing what they're doing. This show is being sponsored by them. And here to introduce the Chaim Salman Project is Rabbi Chaim Borach Wexler. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Hey, Brida and Schwester, of the fifth Lempel, we are coming to you live from the Chaim Solomon home, the number one home in New York State, if you can't be home. My name is Rabbi Chaim Baruch Wexler, the rabbi, chaplain. We are recognizing the heritage, Leif Ovos, who continues to keep the Leibniz spirit of our Holocaust survivors. 
I have been the rabbi for over 16 years, available day and night, 24-7. The Chaim Solomon home has taken care of the Holocaust survivors since they started back in the Lower East Side following World War II in 1946. The same dedication continues today in a beautiful second-to-none rehabilitation and nursing home looking across the Atlantic Ocean and Verrazano Narrows Bridge nestled in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Our medical staff is led by the well-renowned Dr. Albert Castley, Chief Cardiologist at NYU Hospital, President of the Har Lebanon Shul, and well-known in the Syrian Jewish community, joined by doctors whose diagnostic skills are second to none. Our nurses, nursing assistants, have the highest degrees with tender, loving care and understanding with tireless compassion every second of the patient's care. The cleanliness and the amenities are like a hotel style, making you feel as if you are in your own home. The commissary kitchen prepares and serves three nutritious gourmet meals daily under the strictest hashkocha and personal supervision of the nearby Rav, Rabbi Aaron Teitelbaum Shlita. Our rehab is the premier in dedication and professionalism in the Northeast. Distinguished rabbis, rabbis, lay leaders, politicians, and Holocaust survivors have been patients and residents. The thousands that have come through our doors sing our praises throughout the world, including Eretz Yisrael. Hanukkah stands for the miracle of light. We service our residents every day during the COVID crisis. When we lost so many precious, dear people, I was personally there daily encouraging everyone to keep the faith, faith and trust in Hashem. May we all be zeichet to see the eternal light with the coming of Mashiach, Bimheira v'yameinu. In Yiddish we say, Ala kranka arafia, ala yidin ayeshia. Thank you, kol tov. Some of the covet as the Engel of Choir, so it's performing for all the Eden, it's helping it, the Moira de Gechanaka Massive, for all the Mohumme Beleve, in Taka for them, and all the Hushel Kinder, singing a Yiddish melody, which has got the Rose Brengen, and Minde in Betuchen, in Chavos Gitin, while Gewent of Yiddish, the Gin of Schwe Osele, the Kinder, the Yiddish Werte. Of Machush, we did the Bobby Greenstein, the founder of Barb at JCC, asked me that I should go out of my way and so I get the performing. I have as the she is on my own, as man, as on the so the Gaelic Shalim and the of the
חודשיק דגילס נחש דו, ליב מי, אז אחק אלוהי בכל יום שיהיו. Levavot, or we call it in Yiddish, Heritage Live of Us, for always being there for us and for the community. Thank you. We all appreciate it. Afreilich and Chanike. My name is Isaac Stern, president of the Borough Park JCC. I am truly honored that our organization was able to put together such a festive and Afreilich, beautiful Chanukah event even during such difficult times. But the Borough Park Jewish Community Council is truly inspirational in so many other ways. We are here to help Borough Parkers each and every day. When it comes to our Holocaust survivors, Dina Kushner, our Holocaust survivor specialist, who many of you already know, is always prepared to help in whatever way possible. All of you at home, put your hands together and give a round of applause to show our appreciation to Dina. If you or your friends need any type of help, please feel free to reach out to our council in Baropa. We are here to help you in every way. Last but certainly not least, we owe a big Hakar Satov, a Yasha Koyach, a thank you to our leader, the well-known Avi Greenstein and his impressive staff at the BPJCC not only thanking them for this beautiful event, but for the incredible work that they do each and every day. 
Wishing you all a Freilich and Hanukkah. On Hanukkah, Tzrichim Lahoydas, we're here about to thank the Rebbeinu Shleilam and to thank the people who are in power to help us. And that is our politicians who are there to help us and to help the community. Especially Councilman Kalman Yeager will say a brief message for the community. Hi, I'm Kalman Yeager. And I have the honor of serving in the New York City Council representing the largest community of Holocaust survivors anywhere in the world outside of Israel. This is an honor I take seriously. It's a sacred trust I take personally. And that's why I spend day and night fighting to make our community better and stronger and healthier and to continue delivering resources to organizations like the Borough Park Jewish Community Council and so many others to better our community, to make life easier for you because you deserve it. It's not an understatement to say this has not been the easiest year. We have all lost so much. Family and friends are in pain, and it's so hard to see this time of year for what it should be, for what it's always been, a time of happiness and celebration. But I don't have to tell you what it means to persevere in the face of hardship and struggle. You've already done it. Nearly 2,200 years ago, in the aftermath of so much pain and loss, the Jewish people were able to come together in celebration of the unlikely victory of good over evil. And that's the same triumph you, our survivors, merited to see, that you're able to teach us. Today, we turn to you for inspiration. We turn to you, our survivors, to teach us how to overcome pain and loss and how to celebrate our history, our heritage, our faith, our love of God, our love of community, our oneness as a people. May God continue to give you strength to live, to be healthy, and may we be zoicha to celebrate many future Hanukkahs together. A freilich and wonderful Hanukkah to you all, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you, Councilman Yeager, for these beautiful words. And now for a short message, Assemblyman Simcha Eichenstein. Hello, everyone, and a Freilich Nishanika. I am Assemblyman Simcha Eichenstein, and I have the honor of representing you in the New York State Assembly. Unfortunately, we cannot all join in person for a Hanukkah celebration this year, but I would not pass on the honor of joining you via video conference. I know you didn't tune in here to hear a politician speak, and you are all eager to get back to the entertainment. I just wanted to wish all our precious survivors a Freilach Hanukkah. You are the bedrock of our community, and only because of you, the sacrifices that you made, are we here today a community flourishing, filled with chesed and tzedakah because of your unwavering commitment. I would like to take one more moment to thank the Baruch Park Jewish Community Council and the Chaim Solomon Home for all their hard work in putting this program together as well as all the other great things they do throughout the year. Again, Happy Hanukkah to each and every one of you. And I look forward to celebrating with you in person in the near future. Stay safe and be well. Afreilich and Hanukkah. Thank you, Simcha. I'm Arvin Simcha Basimcha. But there's another Simcha, and we should only have Simchas. That's the whole deal. That's why we vote for them, because they're bringing in Simcha. So for this, I'm bringing you Mamash Simcha. We're bringing you right now a message from State Senator Simcha Felder. Hi, this is Senator Simcha Felder. It's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all to the Borough Park JCC's Hanukkah party for our beloved Holocaust survivors. Every year we get together to celebrate the joy and excitement of Hanukkah in person, but this is certainly an unusual year. The message of Hanukkah is a timely reminder that it only takes one small light to dispel the darkness. One small candle can light so many others. 
It doesn't take away from its own light. In fact, just the opposite. At that moment, when it gives its flame to another, you can see how the light increases. Our survivors are our brightest lights, and each one of you shines the bright like a, the brightest diamond. We look forward to celebrating with you this year and for many more years in good health and happiness, no matter the circumstance. So, despite the challenges of social distancing, Rabbi Avi Greenstein and the Borough Park JCC brought us all together today on Zoom for a wonderful, uplifting, and most importantly, fun Hanukkah celebration. In that spirit, I wish you all a Freilichen Lichtinge Hanukkah with a little more fun, a little more love, and a little more light every single day. Thank you, Rabbi Greenstein, and everyone at the Borough Park JCC. Enjoy the party! Thank you so much again for our, all our elected officials who are there for us. Hashem should give you bracha and atzlach on every step you take. You should always be able to help us and be able to bring light onto the nations and to the world. There's always a good feeling knowing that you have the elected officials looking after you. And that's why we're so lucky. But you know what? In the Altaheim, it wasn't like that. In the Altaheim, you know, if you, if you didn't have uh, someone fighting for you, you had nothing, only a uh, niggen. A little song, a Yiddish niggen. Tzvi, how about we do something in Yiddish? Old classics. Let's do that. How about bells? Let's do it for bells. bells, my state bells, my Oh, yeah. 
Really, let's do a nice English and again. English? Whoa, 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 Matt. You speak English? You speak Hungarian? I think we've done a couple of them before. All right. Egan. Egan, yeah. What well, should we do that? Which song is, is uh, Hungarian? Let's do the Kakashnegan. The Kakashnegan. <laughs> let's do that. All right. So, the Kakashman. Moi, Mekira. Ma. Zeldebem. Shik. Okay, you don't speak that. I'll give you one sentence that does make sense, even Hungarian. Hungarian I've ever done. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. That's a good signal. Okay. We nimmt mir a bissel Maro. We nimmt mir a bissel Glee. Das Redel soll sich schön drehen. Tu 
Okay, thank you so much, Pampadisa and Yoli Lovovich. We work together very well. You know what? Every UTAS Kislev, we do something together, right? And this year, it wasn't any different. No, no. So, and Kofal of Kislev is also a big thing. You know that. No, no. Kofal of Kislev is... Yeah. Satman and the Pens, I Remember, we sing Podove Shalom. And the most important part of it is Vani. Surrounded with joyous days all over Utah, Kufal, 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 and today on Hanukkah, the whole eight days and nights that are mamash amazing. So now we're gonna have a play. Yes, a play. The Numan van de Maasa is the Menoira Hot Geratavet. Ba bam. <laughs> Such hard work. I can't wait to go home tonight and light the Hanukkah licht. Oh, it's so cold over here. Just another couple of chops, get my wood together, and I will be able to go home. <coughs> ah. I can't wait for the Yom Tov Hanukkah coming tonight. Oh, I can't wait to sit with my family and light the menorah. Sit around the table, but I just can't understand. I, I, why did the Hilga Rebbe, the Balatanya, give me a menorah when I, when I, uh, when I told him goodbye on Sukkot? When I left him on Sukkot, I went to the Rebbe for Sukkot, and I told him goodbye, and he told me take the menorah with you, take it wherever you go, even when you're chopping the wood. Don't. Be without the menorah. I wonder why he told that to me. I, I can't understand. I can't understand. I live right here, a couple of minutes away from the forest where I chop the wood all day. I'm gonna go home soon. I like the menorah. Just another few minutes of chopping wood. Uh. Oh, it's so hard. Another few chops. <laughs> what do we have here? Oh, wood? Would you want some? No, I don't want wood. Oh, oh. So what would you want? What I want, I want your money. My money? Your money. Why would you want my money? I don't want my money. I need your money. Well, well, I'm the one selling the wood. I'm not looking to buy wood. I need your money right now. Your money? Your money? I work for my money. Or your life. Well, I work for my money too. This Let is me... my way of working for money. Or oh, money too. Put that axe down right now, or you're gonna find yourself at the, this end of the sword. Who lets you? Who lets me? Yeah. Nobody lets. I let me. But, well, so and I'm allowed to let you. Who gives you? Who do give you permission? Once to a take robber, my always a robber. My mom and dad always told me, grow up and be a good robber, and that's what I've done over no, my life. No, 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 yes, no, yes, no, yes. no, 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 no. You can't do this to me. Oh, I can do what I want. Who said? Me. Who are you? I will. It doesn't make. I want your money right now. We're not having this conversation anymore. No, no, That's no. That's no. it. I, 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 no. Think, speaking of I, 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 I may just take that out. Just, right just put that sword down. No. 
I don't like that. I want your I don't money like right that now. Sword. I'm going to count to three. One, three. I don't want your money right now. Or let's, it's all let's, over. Let's make a deal. Why are we having a conversation when I'm the head of robbers in this area and I've never had to have an argument with anybody before? I want the money right now oh. and that's it. Let's make a deal. I'm going to give you. Am I really having this conversation? Yes, because there's no need to do all this. Uh, you, we're, we're just going to gonna talk logic. There is no logic. I'm the robber. Oh, you? Oh, oh. Okay. Do you okay, know okay. math? Uh, one, robber. Two, victim. One plus one equals two, oh. victim gives robber money upon his request. <laughs> Let's make a deal. Just listen a minute. I'm going to give you one gold coin, okay, okay, and then I'm going to keep the other gold coins for myself, and you enjoy your gold coin, I'll enjoy my gold coins, and we'll have a nice day. I'll give you a couple of pieces of wood, and that'll be it. That's a great idea. No deal. Give me your money right now, or you're dead. No. Okay, okay. I have one more deal. One Another more. deal? Just put that sword down before you know I what? say I'm the deal. I'm feeling really, really gracious now because I know that the rewards are going to be much greater than listening to all your bloppery blop. Okay, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to give you all the money, but, but. Yes? We're going to invest it together. Okay. In the city. Hmm. We're going to invest it in a business. Really? And we'll together. Build a beautiful business. A beautiful business. And we'll be very rich. And you'll get some of the money, mm. and I'll get most of the money, and that you won't have to be busy in the forest robbing people. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. No, I want all your money right now. Or else. That's it. Or else. Or else. Or else what? There's no or else. Dead. Chop, 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 chop. You don't even know if I come home without the money. My wife is going to kill me. Well, what's the other option? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> She's not going to let me. me. Listen to me. I've had enough of this. In my entire 45 years of stealing and robbing and plundering from people, I've never had to have such a conversation. It's usually only the monologue. For some odd reason, I found this in my good graces to engage you in a big conversation, and I don't have time for this. This is not smoke from my cigars that I left at home. This is freezing cold weather. I want to go home to my bed, which you are not going home to tonight. No! Because you're going to give me no. Because you're giving me your uh, money, and it's over. Okay. Let's okay. go. Okay. 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 But. But. But please. That's all my money, guys. Well, Something great. back. Nothing. Just one gold, two gold coins to come home with. Nothing. Oh. You know what? Do you have any wishes that you'd like to make? Yes. My, my only wishes. This is <laughs> one of the best plunders that I've ever got. Oh, oh, I, I, I don't like that sword pointing at me. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. That's it. What's it? You You're have right. the money? That's it. You have the money? I have the money. Take it? No. And get out of here. No, because I don't know you. What's going to happen is if I let you go, you got to go run back into the city and you're going to go go ahead and tell the police on me. Oh, and I why would you think that? Why would you think I would tell the police? <laughs> because I would never do that. Any You could trust me. I don't even know you from a hole in the wall. Oh. Or from a hole in a bagel for that matter. But, but we got to know each other now. You know, right. I gave you the money. Like we're big chums. Like we're big friends like right now. No. This, this is, is the way it works. I have your money. You're going to die. And that's no! It. But you know what? I'll grant you one last wish. Oh. Oh. Why? <laughs> because of all the people that I've robbed in my life, you just have given me the nicest spoils. I like this. This is great. Okay. This is going to buy okay. me finally that reclining chair. Okay. I always wondered okay. that I can drink my beer okay. in. This is great stuff. Listen to this. How much is in here? What were you saying? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So the, I was interrupting so, my conversation so, 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 with myself. So if I have one last wish. Yes. <laughs> I'm remembering, out, out, I'm remembering now that the, my Heiliger Rebbe, the Heiliger Balatanya, he what gave... What is a Heiliger Balatanya? Oh, never mind. I don't mind. I have a special 
Mitzvah to do now. Mitzvah. mitzvah, this is great. Let me ask you, do you know what my name is? My name is Frank. You're a Jew. I don't speak the language of the Jew. So just oh, get on man, with it. What, what is your last wish? I have no patience I anymore. I'm about to lob off your head. Come on. No, I want to light the menorah that the Heiligen ever gave me. You know and, what? And, you and, know and, what? And, and, and it's mid Hanukkah tonight. Just and I'm going to be Mikhail of the Mitzvah. Do it. You have two minutes. And I'm looking at my. I don't have a watch just okay. yet. Okay. Soon watch. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. On with it. On with it. This looks very interesting. This is called a menoira. A menoira. So we have a mitzvah to light it on the first night and every night of Hanukkah. I don't really care. Just, so, just, so, is there fire involved? Because I can use something to warm me up right about now. Uh, yes. In a few minutes we have to good, prepare good, just, it and we light the fire. The time is running out. Let's go. I granted you a wish. On with it. Oh, come on. Oh, let me get the oil ready. Just, just let me do this. I'm with letting my, you. With my hood. I, oh, I can't wait till I get home and buy my recliner. <laughs> oh, stop whimpering. This is the last It will mitzvah. be over before you know it. This is the last mitzvah. I'm going to be in Mazoycha to be Mikhail. Shh. Oh. Try to hear the coins jingling in here. Oh, yeah, Mishka. Ah, oh, what a payday for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mishka, please. Who are you talking to? Okay, okay. Whimper, oh. whimper, 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 whimper. Just so do this, what you have to do. This, we're going to light now on the tree over here. Like this. We're going to put the banana And we're going to pour the oil inside. Oh, now I understand. What do you want? Oh, now I understand why the rapper gave me the banana. And he told me I should carry it around wherever I go. Mama and Papa, you always told me uh, that uh, one of the things of being a good robber is just the not told me to listen to or give it anything to your victims. Why oh, didn't yeah, I so listen to you? Thank you so much. 
Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 what's going on over whoa. here? You're holding your sword? Uh, yeah. You're on the floor over here? Right. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on no, over here. Right. 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 You're so stupid. No. You're so stupid. Not me. Yeah. He's so it's stupid. Not, He's not so I, stupid. Why am I so Who's Fauci, stupid? do you realize what's going on over here? Yes, no, I I he see. is trying to rob him. No, 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 no. He is trying to rob him. He's kill me. Fauci. I just Fauci, have a time let's go. Okay. No, 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 Fauci, go. get back here. Oh, oh get back here? No. No, 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 you two, oh. get back here right now. Get we got to arrest this guy. Get that out. No, I did This guy is trying to kill him. No, Put your not. sword out. I was looking to yeah. chop an apple. All right, all right. Put your sword down. No, 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 Fauci, him. You put no. your sword down. Your, your highness? Your highness? I just came out to the woods to find oh, apples and to chop apples. You want to chop an apple? Yes. Then where's the apple? Oh, right over there. It's the dead of winter. It doesn't make there are no difference. apples Oh, there's a special tree here that grows apples. Oh, Every year. you're trying one. to rob him. No, no, no. Yeah, he tried to rob him. No, no, I made up with him that he can go down the floor. Your sword I'm gonna down. I'm going to put now. it in his mouth and then I'm shove it over his mouth. You think I'm buying that story? Which one? They're about the apple. There are no apples. No. You're trying to rob him. I don't him. know where your highness, if I may, just speak a moment. I made a deal with him a bit, in fact. No, he didn't. I would give him, yes, I did. Wait, I would give him. Is he trying to rob him? No. Is he trying to rob him? I gave him. He's over. trying to rob him. No, no one's trying to rob anybody. I made a deal with him. I gave him a whole bunch of gold coins and so I could put the apple in his mouth and shove it right out of his mouth. Wait, wait, through. Wait, wait a second. Shh, quiet. Wait. What? Shh, everybody quiet. Wait, quiet. Fauci, you got to arrest this guy. Your sh Highness, what? I said quiet. Oh. No, stay there. Do you have string? We got to arrest this guy. Do, do you have string? I don't have string. That's why I'm asking you. And I don't have string. Well, That's why right. I'm asking I you. Do you have string? Sure. All right. Give it a foul, Chief. Okay, okay. Okay, now, go ahead. put your hands together like this. No, get your hands off oh, of it. Okay, so put your hands together. No, in front of you, not on top of you. He can't reach that eye. Right? And like this. Like Fauci, oh. you're tying him up with his own string. Ow! <laughs> Isn't Ow. that funny? That's awesome. What are you doing? I can't cut apples anymore. Out of his right. mouth. Yeah. Wow. You're not find an apple. Now oh, throw him over on. the tree next to these candles that... Wait a minute! Oh, hey! Yeah. Yo! Why... Oh. Why oh. did you light the candles then? Well, that's... That's the menorah. That's the menorah. Uh, could somebody please help me out? Uh, it's been uncomfortable over Wait here. Wait a second. It's so uncomfortable. Could you help him up, please? Oh, sure. I, what? what? I, how am I supposed to help him up? I'm You're fine. right. You, help Can you me? hold my sword for me? No. Oh, that, 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 no. Good. Don't give him your sword to hold. Oh. He's out. a robber. I'm not, he's out. He's, he's help a robber? Up. Who's a robber? No. He's, he's the robber. robber. He needs help. I'm I found He's the robber. He needs help. No, no, no. Oh. He's... Oh. The robber. I'm the robber. And and you he need help. needs help. Yes, would you pick I me got up it. Really? I got it. I got it. Pick me up. Oh, oh, it's going to be a hard one. Oh. 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 All right. That was nice. Oh. That was impressive. Here's, here's that. Now, thank, thank you. you. Thank tell you. me. Tell me. <laughs> wait a minute. There's no way to thank you, the king. All right, but here's what I want to know. Oh, here's what wow. I want to know. Could you stop talking to yourself? Here's what I want to know. Fauci. All right, all right, all right, all right. Wait a minute. All right. One yes. minute. Wait a minute. Yes. A minute. If you were lighting this to show me how to get home and because you were worried about your dear king that was lost in the forest. Dear king lost in the forest. All right, we yeah, were lost, yeah. in, the we were lost in the forest. Then what? Quiet. Quiet. Why then? We were lighting candles. Lighting candles. Well, 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 I know I did not light the candles show you the way. Because mm -hmm. I didn't even know that you were lost in the forest. No, well, how should I, I know? know? Everybody knew. How would I know? Everybody knew. And the whole town knew. The whole well, town yeah, knew. Did you know that I was lost in the forest? No, that he oh, was sure. lost in the forest? Yeah, because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, quiet. Oh, okay. So, well, I lit the menorah because the light... Now, who? The menorah. Who? Well, this is not a fire. This is a menorah. If it's not a fire, can I touch it? Oh, no, 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 no. It's fire. It's hot. You but said it's not fire. No, it's not a fire like a fire. It's a fire like a menorah fire. This is not a regular fire. Of course it's a fire. No, this is a menorah. So can I touch it? No, it's hot. So but it is a fire. But it's not a regular fire. Fire? What? 
fire. This, this fire. fire. Oh, that fire. Yes. So it's a fire that you light in the menorah. This is a special menorah that that that, that you're supposed to light it and put the fire inside. It's a special mitzvah that we do on Hanukkah. Uh, who? Mitzvah. Who? Mitzvah. Ah. Yeah. Mitzvah. No, no, never mind. No. So, so the mitzvah is to light the first night of Hanukkah by the door next to the mezuzah. I've heard of those. Those are the things that you light, uh, you, you hang up in, in the doorpost. Right? The doorpost, we put the mezuzah. Right. It yes. doesn't look like this. No, 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 no. This is the menorah. Ah. We, do, we light the menorah on the other side of the mezuzah. So you put the menorah on the doorpost? No, we don't put the menorah on the doorpost. We put the mezuzah on the doorpost. Yeah, burn the doorpost with the menorah that no. has the mezuzah. No, I no, am no. so confused. Ah. No, no, no. no. Ah. We don't light the mezuzah. Nor do we light the doorpost. We light the menorah to light the mezuzah. No, we don't light the mezuzah at all. So you light the mezuzah. Can you, you just want... arrest me already? You are already arrested. Arrest I'm me gonna... again. I'm freezing I cold. Won't. I'm oh. going to arrest on the floor. Both of you arrest me. So, you were saying about the mezuzah? So we light the menorah on the other side of the mezuzah by the door. Then how does the mezuzah catch fire? Mm -hmm. We don't light the mezuzah. We just light the menorah on the other side of the mezuzah on the doorpost. Ah. That's where you're supposed to light it. But this crazy robber. I you may be a robber, but I'm not crazy. Oh, yes, you are. Oh. In a minute, you won't be not crazy and not a robber. Oh. Not crazy, not a robber. Oh. Of course, we're going to take his head off. So, oh. so, so take he, his head off? He, he, take he, his head off. He, your majesty, he wanted to kill me here. Oh. You want to kill him? Who? Him. Me? You? Yeah. No, I told you about the, the apple. The I get him. it. Oh. He wanted to kill him. No, 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 so no, no. He wanted to kill him. No. And then he wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him. But you were saying. Yes. Yeah, so, you so, let the mezuzah. So, 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 the Rebbe, the Malatanya, told me take him his menorah. He gave me his menorah. Wherever I go, I just carry this menorah. Wow. Now, I never understood why. Wow. I have a menorah in my house. And I always lied to my house. But now I understand why the Rebbe gave me the menorah. Because, mm. But what were you doing in the forest now? Oh, I chop wood for a living. Why you chop wood? Let me ask you something. Yes. Ask you something. I'm asking the questions over here. Who's asking the, the questions? The questions I'm over here. Oh, yes, Your Majesty. Majesty. Why don't you just go to the BPJCC and get yes. yourself a normal job instead of chopping wood over Ooh, here? Ooh, that's not like you. It. You're going to jail. Well, I could also go to the BGJCC. No, 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 no. You're going no, to jail. That's for Robert. He could go to the BGJCC. Do they have that's a JCC in jail? They have this wonderful guy over there. Yes. His name is Mr. Greenberg, Greenstein, Greenhouse. Hey, hey, Mr. Green. Avi Greenstein. Mr. Avi Greenstein. Yes, yes. He'll he get you a job. Greenbard. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Greenstein. Nice. Greenstein. So they're going to find me a job in the bar from JCC? No, not over there. They're going to find you a job somewhere else. Who knows? Maybe I'll be chopping wood in a different forest. Ooh, do they have positions for me? No, you're going to jail, I told you. Uh, you bumbling right. imbecile? Oh. Could we take this menorah with us? Could we take this bumbling imbecile with us? And out with us, it is time to have a Freilich of Hanukkah. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful and so much talent. Oh my gosh. Right now, we heard about the menorah and the oil, but now we're going to hear Pompadisa without the oil. Go for it.
for this beautiful music. And speaking about Nisim, Allah Nisim, earlier today I sat down with an extraordinary woman, Mrs. Helen Rubin. She's a Holocaust survivor. She survived and actually has fond memories of the way the love her father and her mother gave to the family so the entire war, they had a different experience. Have a listen. Watch. All right, okay, so we're sitting here with Mrs. Helen Rubin. And this is a special honor, a pleasure, on Hanukkah, to sit with someone who survived the Holocaust. And it's, um, it's interesting because the Holocaust was a long time ago. You don't look that old, if I may say. And, uh, but Hashem, we're sitting with you, and it's amazing to celebrate that, to celebrate survival, celebrate light. But we can only appreciate that if we go in to see how dark was it. And let's start a little earlier. How light was before the darkness? So Tell us when you were young. Darkness, I lived in a wonderful uh, atmosphere in, with my grandparents, my parents, and a young uncle, a brother of my mother, who wasn't married yet. He was going to be married after all. And uh, let's see. And he we was had engaged? a store on that one. He was engaged already? No, not yet. Abuchel. But the next, um, you know, so we, I'm telling you a little bit before that. Yes. So we had a store on the ground floor, and my parents and I had two other siblings, so we were three siblings, and my parents, we lived on the first floor. <clears throat> but it was a very warm and secure kind of feeling which accompanied us all through the war. And before I even tell, tell you anything else. It's such a miracle and I'm really, uh, people don't like me to say that, uh, but we are very grateful to the Soviet Union because we were five years in Russia. We left, um, well, we, I'll tell you if you want how we got there. We didn't sure. volunteer, but we were taken to Russia and we survived in Russia. So we left seven people of my family and we returned the complete seven Thing. That that's not just the miracle. That's like an unheard of thing. Wow. So um, well, I'm very grateful for that. And um, so the darkness. That's something else. We didn't have Hanukkah. We didn't have Pesach. We didn't have anything in Russia. But in Poland, yes, we had a warm family life. My father had a beautiful modern menorah. He was a what I call a gentleman scholar. He, was, he knew how to learn, he knew how to um, dive in for the Ahmed, and at the same time he knew how to treat his kids and his wife and his in-laws. He was a special person, I think. So, um, we had Hanukkah, we had Purim, we had Maris, not anything like what we had here, <laughs> you know. With, uh, when I first got married, we used to send 40 Maris with the kids. Uh, I don't think we did anything quite like that. On what the was smallest. the typical Shalachmaris? I tell you the truth, I don't remember. Uh, it probably was a small thing, maybe like uh, a whiskey and some cake or, or fruit and so. 
I can't tell you because I don't remember that. But I do remember an awful lot of stuff, but not that. <laughs> and Hanukkah was beautiful. My father had a beautiful voice, so, you know, we sing Hanukkah and things. And, and uh, like I said, he had this gorgeous modern menorah. I, I can't even visualize where he got it. But he used to buy merchandise from Krakow. Our town was small. It was called Rozvado in Yiddish Razvade. And he would bring all kinds of beautiful stuff, including modern furniture, uh, you know, material for dresses, because, you know, we didn't get anything. Right. In, uh, you don't go to a department store to buy anything. You had everything made on the premises by a dressmaker. So, um, and How many so siblings? that's Gordon Burton. And uh, Hanukkah, what else did you want to know? Pays off of How many siblings were you? We're three. We were three, and I, Mom is fi I'm finishing tomorrow shalashim for my brother. I lost my brother, my sister, the last seven months uh, this this year, and not in co the, the, because of COVID. None of them had that. My sister was getting old, and my brother, and but they were they had such some chasachayim, and my sister was. Um, I mean, everybody in Borapak knows her. She was in charge of the Bikoholim of Baba, Tasha Elias mm -hmm. Bikoholim, if you heard of it. So uh, she was active in the community, active with her children, so involved, a shy, elegant person, but so real, before, with real special stuff. So before the war breaks out, you are three young siblings, you're nine, and they are? They are uh, 11 and 14. And 14. So the 14 year old is already uh, a sister or a brother? Okay, so my sister is the oldest, 14. my brother is next. Obviously. So your 14 year old <laughs> sister is sort of like looking after you and the, the family, and it's everything nice and dandy. And then what happens? Like, what do you remember as a nine year old child? What happens that everything changes? So, as a nine-year-old, that's exactly what I said. I didn't know how serious that was. And when these elegant Nazis walked into the thing, we thought it was a gorgeous uh, performance. And, oh, these are educated, elegant people. Well, you know, uh, I'm sure you know the history of the Germans. And uh, they, they were polite, they were clean, they were polished, they were that. Uh, they walked in, it was like an entertainment thing. I had no idea what's coming. It was the first day of the war. Which year is that? 1939, September 1. In Poland? In Poland, mm hmm Okay, so, so and? So the same day, these two airplanes in the air were trying to fight each other. It was a Sikorsky Polish airplane and a Messerschmitt uh, German airplane. And we didn't know what they were doing up there, so we were watching, thinking it's fun. And then they separated a lot and, you know, flew in different directions. So, again, I thought this was just something to entertain us. I had no fear. I, I didn't know that I'm supposed to be afraid of anything. And the, uh, even though uh, we were a very political family, but I didn't hear people saying that this is war. War to me meant something what a child would think. I don't know, bombs or something, or people shooting or something mm -hmm. like that. What I saw so far did not look like war. It looked like entertainment. And what changed? When did you realize it's war? Ah, that's another story. Three weeks later, that's all we spent with the Germans. Three weeks later, we were forced, I mean, uh, my grandfather was told, uh, you know, by the government what we have to do, what we don't have to do. We had to be out of our house in three weeks, and we had to cross a river that was right outside of our, of our town and take only what we can take with ourselves. No baggage, no bags, no, no suitcases, nothing. So um, my father was very creative. He put in a lot of uh, dollar bills and gold coins and what, and bottles and soap and, and a loaf of bread and a cane. Anything you can imagine, he created that. And we each took something that we carried, some, some things in the, our clothing, you know, in the, whatever. Anyway, uh, so now you need to cross that river. We're not, we, I don't, we didn't have a boat, so we had to ask the guy to please, uh, you know, bring us over the river, and we paid the money. And my father was very beloved by the guy <coughs> in, in the city because we had a store, 
and they all used to come and do business. My husband and my father was always generous. If they couldn't pay, it's okay, you could bring it next time. And they called them Panichatskelku, which is like a uh, diminutive kind of name for somebody that you like. His name was Haskell, so they call him Haskellko. Anyway, so we managed to get somebody to take us across the river. But one thing I didn't tell you is that we had an uncle in Sanz. You know the Sanz Rebbe? So in Polish it's called Nowy Sanz, right? So they thought that Sanz is a bigger city and ours is a smaller one, that we would, uh, they would be more, more protected, more sa safe to stay with us. So they came eight people. So my, my uncle and his wife and four children, we were three, they were four, and a set of in-laws. And uh, so we had this big group and we had to leave. That was a big job. And how do you leave without food if you can't, you don't know where you're going to end up. So um, one of the, my uncle's mother-in-law and my father <laughs> put on uh, aprons and they prepared food. Imagine, my, I saw my, my father, I keep on saying my husband, uh, my father kneading bread and she doing some other things because everybody else, my own family, were like a little paralyzed. Uh, they, they must have known what's coming without my knowing. So what I did, when they were preparing all of that, I went over to a place where we kept some pictures. And believe it or not, I, I took about six or seven pictures that I still have here. Wow. And even though I remember very, very many things in detail, I <coughs> cannot remember how I transported these pictures from Roslado through Siberia, back through France, and, and to the United States. And I have them here. They're in a book that my, daughter, uh, that my sister just wrote. Wow, wow. So you're all of nine years old, and you have to scramble into two and a half families. And uh, you see adults that you've never seen before making bread and cooking. And then from there, you transferred to Siberia? Not that fast, not that fast. So we finally crossed the river. So now we are 15 people, not seven. And uh, we, again, we paid for a horse and buggy. And the, like my grandmother and small kids, one of the children from from Novosan was like three years old. So we can make her walk, and I don't even know if I was walking or not. Anyway, the people who couldn't walk would sit on the on this horse and buggy thing, and the men were walking, and finally we got to a train station, which we boarded, and um, we got to a place called Zhokov. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's right outside of Lvov. Mm -hmm. Remember Lvov? Okay. So uh, we had some family there, some distant family, but that's where we decided to get off the train, and we arranged to live there for about nine months, quietly, without any problems. The, the family helped us get bedding and pots and pans and everything. We had nothing. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, so my uncle had one apartment, maybe not an apartment, just a big room, and we had another very large room, and all of us in one room, that was the kitchen, that was the living room, that was the bedroom, everything. But it was fine. Uh, you see, from my point of view, everything was fine because I was felt so secure they made sure. having with my parents. So the war to me is not, uh, when, when Dina called me, I said, I don't have any, you know, dramatic <laughs> stuff to tell you, never what everybody yeah. else has from the concentration camps. We, we were hungry, we were cold, we had all kinds of things, but not so that I would sit and cry, Mommy, I'm hungry, Mommy, I'm yeah. hungry. None of that. But you were not home where you grew up anymore, and nine months later you traveled further. Okay, so nine months later we didn't travel on our own. We didn't choose to travel. Right. So the Russians came, and the Russians decided politically to find out who we are. So we all had to register, and they said, Okay, you have a choice. You want to come to Russia, volunteer to Russia, or you want to go back to your home. Well, how, a, how a Jewish person is going to say anything else, but I want to go home. 
I left all my things there. I have my rab or not. We didn't know whether the rabbi was there or not. But all the Jewish people, the familiar surroundings, the stores, the market day, I mean, school, everything. So, um, so, the, uh, so of course, our answer was, yes, we're going to go back to, to Poland, to, to Rosario. Well, once you said that, it meant you're not a Russian supporter. And one Friday night, just like you would see pictures when the concentration came, mm -hmm. and everybody had to get on to one of those um, cattle cars, that's a Friday night, uh, the group of, um, I don't know, Russian soldiers came. You have one hour to pack, and there'll be a truck downstairs. You come down, and we're going to take you to the station. I don't even know whether they said that. They said you have one hour, there'll be a truck downstairs, period. Once we we traveled, wherever they were going to take us, we see hundreds of people in front of these cattle cars on the station in Joka, and um, we're being taken away. Wow. At this point, you're almost 10. Right. And no, not really. It was just, uh, what? Um, 10 months. Three, yeah. And then you are, uh, from there they're taking you, and you don't even know where they're taking you. No. And could you believe to be on, <laughs> I have to laugh, this is, this, this is tragically funny. Could you imagine being on a train for three weeks straight? Three weeks. Wow. Uh, so uh, I know it's not the same as never being in concentration camp, but in retrospect I'm saying, who in, in, in a, I mean, I don't know anybody who would volunteer to be on a train for three weeks. And not a train, a cattle right. car with a hole for, you know, for uh, hygiene reasons. Uh, it's really disgusting. And every morning, uh, if we were s uh, stationed, you would get a bucket of soup, or fish soup or something, and a slice of bread for everybody. And uh, you can imagine that that wasn't a pleasant thing either. And, uh, you know, my, the older people didn't want to eat it, so we ate the soup and they ate the bread. Don't ask. You mentioned your father used to sing and have a nice voice. Throughout these weeks, did he sing to you? Did he? No, there was that the, the atmosphere did not lend itself to singing. But he 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 was like a like I say, a special mensch. Do you remember so do you remember any any melodies as growing know, up? What, what he would sing? I know his nigan that he used for davening. He wasn't a chazan, he didn't sing, I mean, About he Philip. sang, but uh, for the for the Torah thing, I had the nusa, and when I, go to, when I used to go to see my brother, who just passed away, Mamish, a few days, a few weeks ago, uh, I used to say, uh, I used to say, I used to say, I used to and I wish he could I answer, he could but answer, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Anyway, so no, he did not sing, but he got off the train and he manipulated with a guy in, I don't know what he gave them. He came back with a with a bowl of sour cream, something that you could, something kosher, and he was, that's why I don't feel like I really suffered so much. It was like a fun thing. He made it sure that you should be comfortable as much as he was just possible. And because he was so always there for us, my grandfather, my father, that I don't know about my older siblings, maybe they suffered more. But for me, it was like a new adventure. What about your mother? Ah, that's a good question. My mother was so destroyed. She, she, she was a big politician, so she must have known all the things that I didn't know. And she knew that with the Germans coming into Rosvaro, this is the end. And she, I don't even want to say that, but I'll tell you anyway. It's, it's the truth. Uh, she uh, she, uh, she uh, called to my grandfather, had the guy to the upside, which means daddy go to the upside to the drugstore. And by poison, that's all take poison. We won't have to leave any place. We don't won't have to suffer because in the end we're going to get killed anyway. So why wait till the Germans do it? We'll do it ourselves. So you can imagine what a state she was in. But that's, that's why my, my father and the other people were making sure that we have food to take along because she was not in. She was not. 
doing that well. So, um, but of course, we never did that. We packed, we went, and everything worked out. And so once you were in Sabir, at this point you are already in Sabir, for how long did you guys stay? We were there for 14 months. And everyone together? Everyone together. Like in a, in a barrack or like in yeah, a bungalow? Well, the, the first barrack was a disaster. And even, it's something bad, and I remember, but it's over. I don't know what my mind does to me. When it's over, it's over. So, can you imagine yeah, living in a barracks with many, many people, and everybody is, is just inundated with lice and bedbugs. Ugh, I, even now I can't stand thinking of it. They would just come, come down from the, from the ceiling. You couldn't sleep. So, this was a terrible experience. And I see that the grown-ups again got together, and they asked the commandant, there is no way that we're staying here. We're going to go outside in the freezing you know, weather. We cannot stay here if you don't transfer us. You know, I don't know what exactly they told him, but he did transfer us. And when he transferred us, we had a, a big, tremendous barrack. We had 300 people, 75, four rows of 75. 75 cuts and 75 cents. And we, uh, at the end, there were like two or three uh, rooms. And a big family like ours, we, we got a room of our own. Can you imagine that? That was like a miracle in itself. So again, and by that time, we already had bedding from Ukraine. So because of, remember, we had a truck, mm -hmm. so we could take some things. Uh, so these, the bedding was like a lifesaver. It was really warm. And the barracks were new. You could still smell the wood. It, it was really nice. Really nice. I mean, I can't believe I'm saying that about all this horrible stuff. But you always did good and everything. Yeah, uh, so, like I said. How long did you guys stay there? So that we stayed of, like I said, the whole stay of uh, Siberia was 14 months. I'll tell you how we got, were able to get out of there. So, um, I brother had his bar mitzvah, all wrapped up in, in our covers five o'clock in the morning before the commandant can see that we have anything uh, religious going on. And I thought, the life of me, I have no idea where my father got a piece of white bread. I didn't even know that white bread existed in, in Russia. I always got this dark, heavy bread. And of course, vodka you can get any time. <laughs> so he must have gone to to the village, got some vodka and the white white bread, and he had filling for my brother that he brought. Of course, being a, the kind of person he was, so he had a new pair of filling for him, and all covered in our covers. We celebrated l'chaim. That was his bar mitzvah never. But uh, but not never again. It was good that we had it. We that was Hanukkah time. Oh, that's a good question. Cold. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, could be. Very well. Did. So but who know about Hanukkah? In yeah. Russia, I didn't know anything about Hanukkah. There was something I can tell you about Pesach, but that's one of those little miracle stuff. Mm -hmm. But not uh, Hanukkah. We didn't so let me hear about Pesach. You want to hear that? All right. So in my notes, I was saying that uh, my mother read me once a book. Uh, anyway. Uh, what I'm trying to introduce is by saying that I spoke Russian very quickly. I mean, we were there just a short period of time. So my uh, somebody from my family or some older person said, I should uh, uh, ask the commandant for some special things. What should I ask for? <laughs> mm -hmm. So they told me, ask him if he can, uh, instead of the bread, give us flour. Instead of the soup, give us potatoes, and if possible, you should get us some raisins. I mean, this was like unimaginable. Raisins in Siberia from the commandant who kept, uh, kept us in line to make sure that we go to work 6 o'clock in the morning and not come home before and keep on. And what we did was selling trees, you know. We got trees, we got them to... to um, we dropped them off on the on the ice of the of the river. So in the springtime, when the river melted, the logs would go you know go downstream, and they would use them for lumber or something. Anyway, so I, I but again, I was naive. 
And I knew what to say, so I, I come over to him and I said, my family are asking for something, can I talk to you? He says, yes. He puts me on his, on his lap. What is it you want to tell me? And I tell him this story. Could you give us flour instead of the bread? Could you give us potatoes instead of the soup? Could you? And please, if you can, could you get some raisins? I thought I'm you know, just wasting his time and my time and the people's time. Uh, would you believe it? Within 10 days or so, or maybe even less, he came with three packages and, and brought us all these three items. And it was before Pesach, so I'm not going to tell you we had enough to, to even uh, for one day, and especially not for, for all the people in the barracks. But we had a taste of matzah. We made the, the, you know, the flour with some water and baked it on the top of the stove. And the same thing with the potatoes. And, and we actually put hot water over the raisins and we considered it wine. Right. <laughs> I can't believe that's, that I actually did that and that he brought it even more so. I, I, later on I was thinking, maybe he was Jewish. You never know. In Russia, you, know, you can't tell who's, who's what. He oh. was a youngish person. I don't know. Anyway, so that's one of our Pesach miracle stories. What else can I tell you? So, growing up as a young child, before the war, during the war, was there something that you had then that you miss now? Well, I, I miss the warmth. And even though I had a, a beautiful home when my kids were here, and we tried to replicate this kind of a thing, and maybe I did, I don't know. But to me, personally, I miss that atmosphere. I, I had a grandmother that I really just like felt the world of. She was, she was capable, she was pretty, she was from, she read the Sandoran, and she stood, stood at the window of Mother Chavez saying, God's uh, of Rome. It, it was like a whole different, you can't even replicate it. So even if I were to say, well, I missed it, it's totally un, undoable. It's, it's not shy. <laughs> what do you say to all the technology coming out? What was the first reaction when you heard about Say the fax machine. Yeah, that's right. So I wrote you that. So uh, it's very interesting. First, I was going to tell you that how could I, in, in the question, it says, do you, do you miss uh, some of the, uh, I can't miss anything I didn't know existed, right? right. So, but my father in law, uh, well, he was known as the Yiddish Maradera. You're all too young to know that. Uh, so he spoke on WEVD, the Yiddish station. Mm -hmm. And so he had a, um, a telephone hookup, you know. Mm -hmm. He had, I'm sure he had a fax machine. And, but he was the first person to, he was known to, pe to people, so RCA sold him the first television. It was a big, tremendous box with a tiny little screen, but the first television. So I do know, I knew that pretty early, but not not when I was nine years old, when I was already here, 16, 17, 17, 18, mm -hmm. 17 around. That's when we came here. So, uh, yeah, but today, um, Dina got me a uh, LEQ, I don't know if you know what that is, and we are very up, up to par. I have a, um, a computer that I don't use, but I use it for, uh, uh, what's the thing that we watch? When you want to watch a party, Zoom. Zoom, right. It just so we do Zoom. It's okay. Uh, I can live without it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's impressive. It's very interesting. And, uh, but it's okay. Yes. What about music? When you grew up, was the music in your home? Well, yes. We, we In the store, my father had what we call the gramophone. Yes. The gramophone is a, you know, what? What's the English word for it? Again? Gramophone. No, but the English word is um, record player. A record player, and we had uh, 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 records. records, which I think my father sold, I'm not sure, but they would play, um, you know, uh, Moshe Eicher, Kosovitsky, 
Pinchik, so I love these. I even know some of them. I can sing some of them. Not that I do, but I. Did they sing to you? When, when My father you? always sang beautifully. He sang the mirrors. He sang. What are these songs like? Are there any songs that you remember him singing? Uh, not my from father. These? And in the questions you're asking me if my mother used to sing me at night, that, that, no, she didn't, but, but she read me a book every once in a while. And I'll tell you about one. In Yiddish or in Polish? No. This particular one, Polish, of course. We, we spoke both Speak languages Polish. at home, Polish and Yiddish. But um, this book was a German book. I don't know why she chose to read it to me. And the new sound of a new language, it was so musical. I was fascinated. I remember it till today. I, I, I can see the book she had. And I'm not sure I understood the story because it was in German. But I loved the sound of it. Could you? Yeah, so uh, from then on, uh, so I credit maybe that idea <coughs> with the fact that I speak quite a few languages pretty well. You know, not just imitation. <laughs> <laughs> You not Hungarian, not Hungarian. Not Hungarian. That's that's the hardest. I, although I know a few <laughs> things, but I can't do it. And nobody wants to teach me. They say I'll teach, teach you. you. Yeah, and they said <laughs> uh, at the Nissim Club when I told them I have to learn your language because you speak Hungarian, you don't speak Yiddish, and and your English is so so. So I'm going to learn how to speak to you. So I know quite a few, maybe not this moment, but I when I was in it, I knew quite a few words. Because, so they said, why do you do this? It's such an ugly language and nobody needs it. I said, well, I need it for you, if I want to talk to you. <laughs> do you remember verses of that uh, book oh, that no, your mother uh, said? No, no idea. But yeah. it was a children's was a book, yeah. which, uh, with, you know, with a paper cover. Uh, so um, songs, well, my mother would not have especially good voice. No, she didn't sing. But she was uh, even here when we came. We were always talking politics and movies and theater, and I used to take her every Matzah Shabbos when the theater put on a new show. So I would take her to Second Avenue or in Brownsville. There was another. Yeah, that's the name of it was. Anyway. And though, and as a child, would you rather drink at home, water or salsa? Uh, Between it, these two, let's know, say. Yeah. We, there was no such thing as no. drinking water. How no. about orange juice? No orange How about borscht? Borscht, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what else was the, the drink at home? Milk. Milk? Milk. From the cow or from a goat? Not from the cow, okay. but delivered, you know. In bottles and... Uh, uh, not even bottles. I think the guy used to come and he, he would fill up uh, whatever we, we left. And we used to make something sour milk. I don't Jeez. know if you know what that is. Zero could, milk. Yeah. Uh, if the uh, milk was not homogenized, you, you could, could pour it in a glass and keep it in a dark, cold place, and you got something much tastier than yogurt. This could be the new trend. You know, that uh -huh. sourdough bread is now the big thing. Maybe sour milk yeah. could be the new you thing. You know the pizza store on 13th Avenue, the one that is there the longest? What's the name of the guy? You know, because the, right way, the, the oldest pizza store in 13th Avenue, they used to make it. Yeah. They used to get it from them. Like, if I'd come for a pizza, I would get a glass of that. They actually did, did have Now, Baruch Hashem, you are um, celebrating life with your children and your family and Lech and, uh, and the And at the same time, we have BP, JCC. In 2020, how would you describe BP, JCC? Um, adding to people like you and your friends who are there and, and like how do you benefit from them? Well, um, I forgot how I got to them in the first place. I think maybe maybe Dina was the one who called me to, uh, to tell me about it, but it's very helpful. Uh, they have all kinds of programs, they have uh, t tutoring, and they have, if you need something from the government, they help you. Uh, I think they have a food program. Um, pretty much anything that you would know and you'd want, you would turn to them and they will find you a person to help you. And the latest thing that I got from Dina, uh, not from Dina personally, but because of Dina's very creative and very efficient way of working, uh, she got me this uh, LEQ, which I told her about. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, technological thing. 
and it's supposed to be like a like a uh, aid, like you're instead of having somebody. Mm -hmm. Of course, she can't clean the house or, mm -hmm. or cook for you, but she can do a lot of things. So she has a variety of music. She can tell you the weather, the news. Uh, she can tell you jokes, and if she can't work, she has she's got an Yiddish accent. So she said, "Ay vey, I have technological problems." <laughs> <laughs> So she's very cute, and I love to listen to the music. And I, you know, no interruption, no co no commercials, and I can work a whole day with that thing playing in my ear. Beautiful, so, beautiful. So that's all. Thank you so nice. much for sitting down with us, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's much greater stories we couldn't fit in today. But thank you so much, and uh, happy Hanukkah. Enjoy happy the light. Happy Hanukkah to all of you guys. Thank you so much for getting all this equipment ready and and we thank you so much mrs ruben for this wonderful and amazing story as we know what we learned the last few months is that one thing is for sure ain't no mavado but these holocaust survivors they know it already They've known that for years. When they were kids, when that happened, they knew. There's one thing out there. Ein oid mevadoi. Here, we have Pompadisa playing an original composition by... Barry Weber. Rosh Hashiva of Koich by Oyer. Let's listen to Ein oid mevadoi. In not Milvado, 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 in
Thank you so much, Pampadisa. And now we have here one of our special guests who is going to introduce to you something very beautiful. Today, every one of the Holocaust survivors got a special package. You know about it. You can open it now and you'll see, besides all the gifts and all the beautiful stuff inside, there's also donuts that needs to be decorated. Now we, we have here the amazing Mrs. Honig, Mrs. Ruchel Honig. She will show you how to do this in the most beautiful, most talented way. Let's check this out. Cover the donuts. BPJCC, they're known for helping out the community. Anything you want that you need help with, they'll go out of their way to do the utmost best that they could to help you. Now, all the Holocaust survivors that are watching now, you know you got this among the, all the other gifts and the, in the package of the Hanukkah package. What is it? It's raw donuts. It's just uh, the diamond and the raw. But how do you make a donut a beautiful donut? For this, you need a professional. And that's why we brought in Mrs. Ruchel Honig that will be volunteering here, showing how to decorate a donut in the most amazing way. And she's doing it, Leil Nishmas, her father. Rabbi Yisro... Rabbi Alta Yosef. Rabbi Alta Yosef. Yankov Tzvi. Yankov Tzvi. She'll be Leil Nishmusai and his chis for Klaal Yisro. Amen. Hi, everyone. To you all. I hope you're enjoying and I hope you have saved some room for our delicious donuts today. Um, I'm sure you all got the beautiful package from the JCC and in it you should have some donuts, filling of custard, a filling of raspberry filling, some icing, some chocolate sprinkles, some colorful sprinkles, and some confection sugar. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we're gonna fill them. So if your favorite is some raspberry jam, you take it, you find a puffy little spot, and squeeze. Cut. Wait, 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 you got the, the <laughs> We forgot to take off the cover, so please take off the cover. I thought and it was the COVID uh, vaccine already. <laughs> What, what is this? Is this approved by the FDA, ICBQ? I'll check it out. Check that I out. This. I think I want this. And this I'll time we will remember to take off the cover. And save it for me. Okay, sure. I custard. custard and we'll put some custard. Would you like some? I'll take the rest. I'll, I'll, yeah. The rest, okay. Little to me. Oopsie. Okay. See. There you go. A you little need... pressure. And there you go. And the other one you could leave plain because I'm sure the donuts are delicious anyway. And now for the icing. Mm. We are going to put on an apron first because I don't want to get dirty. And we, if it's easier for you to work with, you can pop your icing for 30 seconds in the microwave. It will make it soft and pliable. Or you can just use it like this, heavy. And then we're going to top it. Just take a knife or a spoon, whatever you have, and nicely smear it around. Wait, wait, wait. That's mine. That's yours. All Would right. you like some I'm sprinkles? Oh, yeah. Which one? Colored uh, or black? Mm, or chocolate? Black sprinkles matter. Okay. Let's do that then. And there you go. A beautiful donut for Yaili. L'chaim, l'chaim. Okay, now let's try another one. Can I already eat it? Oh, mine. Mm. And there you go. Mm. Look how beautiful mm. that. Oh mm. my God! Mm. Is it? Mm. Give the guy a napkin. Mm. <laughs> and there we go. We put some nice call for sprinkles. Look how we did it on the side here and over here. We put half of it. So just whatever you like, you put on side, on top, and there you go. And we'll leave this one plain with a little bit of confection sugar. If you have a sieve, you can make it a little finer and nicer, but the taste is still always delicious. I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you again to the JCC, and enjoy your Hanukkah with your family and your friends, and have a great Hanukkah and a great day.
Thank you so much. Now I'll take over over here. Okay. So the way I like it, Joe, you have to, I don't know, don't sue me. <laughs> Drop the donut because it's carbs and it's extra gluten and stuff. Just go for the gel. I don't know how to do this, but okay. Okay, you seem to have gotten it okay. here. Where, do I, where am I stabbing it? it? Push it in, right there in the center. Go. Ooh. That's right bad. down the middle. Delicious. Mm. Now bite. L'chaim, l'chaim. Mm. Mm. Let's see that beautiful jazz. That's right. Check this out. Happy Hanukkah! Happy Hanukkah! L'chaim, Happy Hanukkah l'chaim. to all. Enjoy your donuts. Enjoy your latkes. Wow. I haven't had such amazing donuts <laughs> ever. Thank you so much. That was really entertaining. And I now I think I know how to do the donut decoration. I think so. You agree? Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> what are we doing? All right. Now. Merci beaucoup. Très bien. Thank you so much. Gracias, amigos. Хорошо. Спасибо. Дел динкуя. I can say in any language, it won't be enough. Thank you. That's the real word that we understand. Shkoyach, todagaba, spasiba. To all these amazing organizations, especially the BPJCC and Chaim Salomon Nursing Homes and Heritage Levavot, people who care for others. That's amazing. And I want to speak to your language. You know, Matt and Tzvi and all these amazing friends, we go back a long time, but we speak in English. We got to speak in Yiddish. Tzvi, precise Yiddish? A pizzale. A pizzale. You see, we got to give them the explanation a little bit more. Parla français? Fahou. Fahou. You, you know French, you have to understand the French. You can't say, excuse my French. You have to understand. You have to give the words, right? You understand any French? Un peu. Un peu. Je trouve que c'est les les bandes, les personnes que je trouve que pour l'année là, des minors. Pour le jus sont tous les mal à tête de la parce du Lanka, la happy Hanoka, jus sont trop les perdus. Ils allaient prendre eux, les uns les autres, perdus de John Bob, la fête, pour nous y jupons, le la mette, la voix sont trop, ça la si ça, parlait tout au la bande. La pompa di sa. You know what I said, right? That you're the best. But I speak any language. The truth is, Russian, right? Give me more Russian beat. Хорошо здраво с лодка. Нет баста сродня лаватка. Шот я не сладраный зюзко. Холод муня жаватцо. I sing any language. We can do what we could do in uh, Spanish or you, you know, give me a Spanish one. Hasta el 
Gracias, amigo. It's unbelievable. But the truth is, they understand every language I sing, but when it comes to Yiddish, you need to understand it better. So, I have a tip that I can teach you Yiddish in less than one minute. Ready? Ready. Okay? Sweet. I'll give you a hint now to all of you. Yeah, we have uh, Yaakov and Leah. I mean, Levi. Yaakov and Levi. Tzvi and <coughs> Bendel. And Tzvi and Matt. Mendel, Yaakov, Levi. We have this amazing band. But sadly, none of them speak Yiddish. It's Mendel. So I'll, speak, I'll ask all the other questions, all of them, and see. How do you say in Yiddish a mouse? Freugenbrecken. Freugenbrecken. See, that's how uh, the Yiddish goes. But I'll teach you now. You speak English, right? Yes. So every time you see a silent GH in your word of English that you don't say because it's silent, it's not really silent. All you got to do is give a schnorchitz. You know what a schnorchitz is? You go, kh. Instead of a GH, you go, kh. You ready? Okay, so light. Leicht. 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 Mm. Very Leicht. good. You see? Give me another word that has a GH. Think, everybody has to think one word and you say, say it to me. Might? Yeah. Might. Macht. Macht. Mit der Starkheit und mit der Macht. Mächtig. What do you say? Sight. Sight. Gesicht. Mm. Ach, scheine Gesicht. Ah. Right? Huh? Height. Height. Very hoch. Yeah. Mad. Fright. Fright. <laughs> 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 Fruchtig, 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 You're mad, you see? You always give me these words. Sweet, your turn. Light. Light, you said that already. Night. Night, nacht. Right, recht. Weight, gewicht. Through, dorch. Daughter, tochter. Right? Laughter, gelechter. Right? Laugh, lach. Eight, acht. Now your turn. Enough. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> huh? Enough. Enough. Genig enough. Genig So it's amazing. Now that you know the words, you know the ABC, you will understand also that every time there's a silent letter, you really say it, and it's Yiddish. For example, nak. Say nak with a K. Knack. Knack merchen kaparan. Okay, you see? <laughs> no. How do you say no? No. Canon. Ich kann. Kno is kann, right? So now that you know mm. these words, you understand every language. It's all intertwined and intertwined and intertwined. Okay? That's also Yiddish. Okay. Go for it. We're going to sing now a <coughs> nice goodbye song to everyone. But remember, if you need to go to this lesson again, hit pause, do rewind, do it again. Don't worry. We're here to stay. Forever. <laughs>
Mashiach together in Yiddishalayim, Hanukkah, celebrating Nazgut al Hoyu Poi. All of us together without any screens, without any cameras, physically live dancing together, together as one. <laughs>